Thanks very much. Um, just to remind you on the panel that we need to press and speak at the same time. So it's going to be a slightly jilted conversation. It's not like the conversations we had when we were setting the project up. I remember lots of lovely coffee and croissants in the Scottish Women's Aid offices. But really, this conversation is, is about yourselves. So looking around the room now, I mean, how does it feel to, to see the success and, and the rollout of, of CEDAR? Sorry, this is going to yeah. be challenging. I'm never going to get the hang of it. Um, it's so exciting. I, I've, can you hear me? Yeah. So I've been away from... No, you can't hear me. You need to press it. Right. Maybe you switch off slightly, maybe. That's it. Just keep it. Okay, now you can hear me. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> okay, so I've been away for five years, so this is really exciting to come back and actually um, listen to the, 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 what people have said so far. It's really brilliant. Um, it does feel a bit surreal, you know, 10 years on and this is going in the way that it is and we'll talk a little bit more about the, the origins and, and what we were kind of thinking and how we got to where we got to, but um, yeah, just an answer to that question, it's really exciting to be here and to see so many lovely, familiar faces that were on that journey with us. It's fantastic. Yeah, I'd agree. It's just, it's, I think when we started out doing CEDAR or developing CEDAR, is that one? Yeah. 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 Okay. I, I think we started off not really sure what we were going to do. We were <laughs> we were really keen to do something that expanded services for children who experienced domestic abuse. And I think at the time it was the the first national policy. It was the, the delivery plan for children and young people who experienced domestic abuse. It was the first time that policy was going to be coordinated for children around domestic abuse. And we thought this would be a fantastic opportunity to try and expand the services that were available to children. Um, Heather and I both worked at Women's Aid at the time. Um, did we say that? Yeah. I can't remember. Yeah, we were both policy workers. And I think what we were just really struck by, children telling us over and over again about the feelings of shame, stigma, um, isolation, worry about being responsible for, for abuse. And we heard lots about what was going on in Canada, the community group treatment programme. And this was just a that's what CEDAR is based on and that was a way to kind of develop that and to address some of those feelings that children had because groups are really powerful and having groups of children together is a really powerful way to take away some of those feelings. Thank you. What do you both remember most about during this period? What were your overriding memories of what that period was like when you were setting the project up? What time and preparation was needed? Um, I have to say that we were so enthusiastic and excited mm -hmm. because we both attended conferences that were in, Lo in London, actually, mm -hmm. and we, we got a sense of what people were doing, bringing this over from Canada. Mm -hmm. And what we were really aware of and what Fiona's talked about was that actually the approach that we were taking often wasn't helping at all. It was making things less safe for women and children, not more safe. Mm -hmm. And there were people really wanted to make a difference and they really mm -hmm. wanted to help, but actually it wasn't working terribly well. Mm -hmm. And we've come a long way since then. Mm -hmm. So I guess we were really fired up and excited and enthused with what we saw because this was an opportunity for people to... It was, it was a reason that they'd come into the work they'd come into to make a difference. And actually the, the, the restrictions that they were facing around safety or around approach or around a lack of awareness wasn't letting them practice in the way that they wanted to practice. So this was an amazing opportunity to start creating a structure that could safely hold an approach mm -hmm. that would allow people to practice in a different and a safe and a much more productive way. And we felt really strongly at the end of the day, when all the professionals are off the pitch, mm -hmm. who's going to be left there to do that? Mm -hmm. It's going to be the mother mm -hmm. of those children that have mm -hmm. experienced this. And so we had to find a way of approaching this differently to make sure that she felt healed and empowered and able to bring her child or her children to that point too. Because one of the things that CEDAR does is it, it challenges this failure to protect narrative that there is around women who have experienced domestic abuse because it says, look at all the strengths that you have, look at how you're supporting your children, and it reinforces those. And it gives children and women a language to speak about their experience of domestic abuse and be able to talk with one another because we know that people are scared to talk about what's going on and there's these silences in families. And CEDAR is one of the f just a fantastic way to try and address those and to support women to support their children. And that's what children want. They want to talk to their mums. They want to talk to their mums about what's happened. And women want to be able to support their children. And that's just what was so lovely about CEDAR. It gave people a language to be able to begin to do that. Thank you both. And can I ask a special question to Fiona about where did the name come from? It was me. It wasn't <laughs> <the> <laughs> she tries to 
Gespräch. Das heißt, ich muss da liegen. In, in Kanada ist es called the Community Grid Treatment Program, which is a horrible name. It doesn't really go. Sorry, in Canada it's called the Community Group Treatment Programme, which doesn't really translate to a Scottish context. We weren't about treating people, we were about creating spaces where women and children could begin to talk to each other about what had gone on in their lives and to recover from that. And CEDAR was just such a hopeful name, which I think really is what CEDAR is. It's a hopeful service. It's not about saying everything that's bad or, you know, it's about, it's about the future too. And yeah, so that was all me. <laughs> So we did sit down and we thought, <laughs> <laughs> how do we bring this to Scotland in a way that translates well? Because some of the language and some of the approach, yeah. you know, just culturally, was different. Yeah. So we weren't, as Scots, we're not that easy with, we're probably better than we've yeah. been <laughs> about the, the kind of language that was quite um, in, in the States and in Canada people were using. So we did have to think about long and hard, but without losing the flavour, the essence, the, we had core things that we knew we would not change. Absolutely not, because mm -hmm. Cedar worked for a reason um, but we did need to think about the context and we did need to think about what would work what would people hear how would they relate to that um, so Fiona did think of the acronym I have to say I'm saying it publicly we did it together but she did come up with it thank you and one final question to you both is there anything that you would do differently if you were back 10 years ago setting this project up I think, you know, the things that we saw in Canada that worked so well, you know, paying attention to how groups should be fun, there should be food for people, we should take care of transport and childcare. I mean, it sounds funny, but these are really important things for, for groups to be successful. So we, we tried to really make sure that those stayed. Um, and, you know, we thought about the evaluation at the beginning. We wanted to learn as we went. We wanted to have an evidence base so that this could be established and rolled out further. I think the only worry is, and it's the case with all services, is about the sustainability of funding. And it was interesting hearing that there, again, despite all the success that CEDAR has and it's, you know, it's got a great reputation, we're still in the same situation where we can be scrabbling for money. And that has consequences for people who access our services, and we should remember that. Just to add to that, um, we were so fortunate because we didn't have to learn, we, we didn't have to make the same mistakes that the Canadians yeah. had made, yeah. and actually the mistakes that they'd made in London. And we were, we, people were so generous about how they shared their learning. Mm -hmm. And that's been the spirit and the ethos of CEDAR that actually when we started, we didn't really know what we were doing. We were quite <laughs> terrified, to be perfectly honest. We just kind of travelled, hopefully, because we absolutely believed this was the way to do this. That, that if we did yeah. this, some magic would happen and we would start to get shifts and changes. So we didn't have to make the same mistakes around having siblings in group doesn't work yeah. terribly well. Having the age group being right. Yeah. Uh, we knew that we had to make sure that we had leadership at every level. So if we got buy-in from chief execs and local authorities who would then support people on the ground to do their best work, we would see some shifts and changes. So we were really lucky. There probably would be things that we would do differently. Um, and probably it would be about that maybe a longer period of preparation to get that buy-in so that people really did feel confident to practice in the way that they did because there are lo lots of concerns around child protection and domestic abuse, obviously, and we had to deal with a lot of those kind of wobbles and, and worries and fears. But we, but we did get there, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you both very much, and thank you to the others, many of whom are here today, who've been involved in the development of this fantastically successful and innovative project. And I don't think we look a day over 10 years older than we were in those days, do we? So thank you very much. <laughs>